This is the moment you have been waiting for. Come gain momentum at the 2017 Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International Conference in Orlando, Florida for the family, fun, and faith experience of the year. Join founder Bishop Paul S. Morton Sr., presiding Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, and over 10,000 guests and be elevated in the areas of faith, family, fitness, and finance. This year's conference features international notable speakers, Bishop Noel Jones, Dr. Bill Winston, including a special women's session led by overseer Deborah B. Morton, and Grammy Award winning and nominated artists Tasha Cobbs, Bashan Mitchell, J.J. Hairston, and more. Come be a part of the momentum, June 26th through 30th at the Orange County Convention Center. Be motivated and maximized. It's time that you do more than live. It's time that you live full. Coming up on Greater Change Ministries. Something bad will happen to me if I don't find myself in the house of the Lord. But somebody is here today because it's just. A child that will walk out of here and won't even see Jesus. Just another service. Just just a job. How I know it's just a job for some people because they'll get through doing what they do in the church and turn right around and cuss you out. Because all of the time that I was in here, I did not see Jesus. I did not know that he was real. How is it possible to look at Jesus Christ on the cross and see nothing spiritually? Let's join Bishop Paul S. Morton at Changing a Generation with Dominion Over Eyes Wide Shut, already in progress from Atlanta, Georgia. So we're just going to stand, lift our Bibles, our iPads, our smartphones. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And repeat after me, if you will, if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with my mind only this word will be dead for me this word will not help me but if I receive this word this kingdom constitution with the spirit over my mind over my emotions over my fleshly desires this word will be life for me Lord I don't need religious form and fashion I need life look at somebody and tell them receive life you may be seated in the presence of the Lord briefly today we're going to go to the gospel according to Matthew the 27th chapter and I am going to focus in on verses 35 and 36 and the word of God says and they crucified him and parted his garments casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Verse 36 says, and sitting down, they watched him there, and sitting down, they watched him there. Today, I want to talk about dominion over eyes wide shut. Repeat after me, dominion over eyes wide shut. Thank you, ushers. This was a title from a movie several years ago that caught my attention. I really needed to understand how are you going to deal with this eyes wide shut. 
Well, when you think about it today, people of God, it simply means eyes wide open but shut. Eyes wide open but shut. Seeing but not seeing. You have to understand this, people of God, because eyes wide shut can be shut to reality. Some people just can't deal with reality. They have a problem dealing with something that is real. Eyes wide shut to truth. When the word of God has already told you, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Eyes wide shut seeing but not seeing seeing but not seeing i am here to tell you eyes wide shut to reality to truth how many of us deal with this in our everyday life we see it but we don't see it your eyes are open People try to tell you, you need to look at that. You really need to look at that. How many parents try to talk to their children or friends try to talk to people to say, watch that man, he's crazy. But you were just so in love. But I love him. I, I love him. All right, eyes wide shut. But he ain't got no job. That's all right. We going to make it some way, somehow. I wide shut oh and relationships somebody's mean before you get married but once I get that ring on my finger she ain't gonna be mean no more he ain't gonna be mean no more eyes wide shut seeing that he's mean but won't accept it because my eyes are wide shut Listen, people of God, well, at the crucifixion of Jesus, the Bible talks about four soldiers. Four soldiers who led Jesus to Calvary. It was their responsibility to do the rough work of the executioner. That was their responsibility. Their responsibility was nailing the sufferers to the wooden crosses. Their job was fixing the crosses in the ground. It had to be right. And they knew what they were doing. Their job was the parting of the clothes of those that were about to be crucified. Then, when all of this was done, they sat down to take their place at the foot of the cross and idly waited with eyes that looked and saw nothing until the sufferers died. Eyes wide shut. I see it, but I don't see it. Let me tell you, people of God, spiritually, spiritually, this means my Natural eyes are open, but I see nothing spiritually. My natural eyes are open, but I see nothing spiritually. What a strange picture, people of God, to think how they were so close, so close to the greatest event in world history. They sat and they stared at it for three or four hours and never saw a thing spiritually. Right at the foot of Jesus. But could not see anything in the spiritual realm all oh, people of God, it is amazing of how ignorant people are of the outcome of what they do. Looking right at it, but can't see it. This has got to get in your mind today. Looking right at it, but can't see it. They should have said, you know, I mean, they're right at the foot of the cross 
They should have said, these four soldiers should have said, look, there's something different now. I've crucified people before. I've executed people before. But there's something different about this man. I, I, I'm sorry. Y'all going to have to get somebody else. You may have to fire me, but I ain't doing this one. Somebody should have been able to see clearly that there was something different about these this man because these four soldiers were foreigners and I suppose that they could not speak a word to anybody in the crowd. They just had plenty of practice in crucifying people. To them, it was just a job. Now they're crucifying Jesus. They've crucified people before, but it's just a job. I ain't got no feelings in this. It's just a job. Somebody over there probably said, you know, that's Jesus. That's, that's the Savior of the Lord. I don't care. It's just a job. It means nothing to me. I have no emotions about this situation. It's just a job. How many people today walk into church every week don't know what they are seeing because they have eyes wide shut. Some people have been singing in the choir for years. Eyes wide shut. Good usher. Good member. Good visitor. I'm here today, but it's, it's just a job because, because, because my mama taught me that I better go to church. I was raised like that or something bad I happened to me if I don't find myself in the house of the Lord. But somebody is here today because it's just a job. They will walk out of here and won't even see Jesus. Just another service, just just a job. How I know it's just a job for some people because they'll get through doing what they do in the church and turn right around and cuss you out. Because all of the time that I was in here, I did not see Jesus. I did not know that he was real. How is it possible to look at Jesus Christ on the cross and see Nothing spiritually. It just seems like to me that there should have been a connection. You know, the Bible tells us that for half a day, they sat and all they saw was a dying Jew. Just another man. Nothing special about him. I can't see that. My eyes are wide shut. Just another man. And that's the way some folk come to church. Because for many people, the preacher up here is just the entertainer. Ain't nothing special about him. You know, God said that he gives, he gives even, even to people, pastors after his own heart. That will lead you and guide you. But some people think, oh, he's just another man up there. He ain't all of that. He puts his pants on the same way I put my pants on. Never see beyond the man. Oh, that's why every time I preach, as the Bible said, we would see Jesus. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see Jesus because he's the one who woke you up this morning and started you on your way and clothed you in your right mind. I don't want you to see Paul Morton. I want you to see Jesus. But some people never, ever see Jesus. Go out of town, they're breaking their neck to see who's preaching. Oh, Lord Jesus, pastor ain't here today. Who that? But Jesus is here. I didn't come to see you. I came to see Jesus. Oh, God, if we could just get back to the place where we realize that our purpose today is to see Jesus.
Jesus because he's been good to us, y'all. You better learn how to praise him. You better learn how to thank him. That's why I don't see how some people can be sitting up here all cute like you don't know who woke you up this morning and given you the activity of your limbs. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Sit on a moment. Many have been in church half their lives but never see anything through spiritual eyes. All of the years. But never really saw Jesus. And when it was over, look at these four soldiers. When it was over, after they had pierced his side, after they had put nails in his hands, after they had put nails in his feet, they went back to the barracks. They had no idea that with eyes wide shut that they had been looking at the most stupendous miracle in the whole world. Right there. Looking at this miracle. They had been gazing at somebody who left Shekinah glory that angels were glad to bow down before. Angels bowed before him. Heaven rejoiced in his presence. There was something special about him, but they, they couldn't see it. Eyes wide shut. Looking at the Savior of the world. But they missed it. Look at somebody say, they missed it. Number one, it was just a job for them. But secondly, they missed it. Somebody met him and said, did, did, did you know who that was? No, I don't know who, who that was. They, they missed it. They missed it. They laid their heads down on their pillows that night and did not know what passed before their eyes. They closed their eyes. They went to sleep. Hear me, y'all. Unconscious that they had seen the Lord manifested in the flesh. They missed it. I preach all over this country, many times in the air, about three times a week, going to minister to the people of God. But I've been at some places. When I was leaving out of the church, I would notice somebody with an attitude. I mean, I preach hard because when I preach, I, I give it, I give it my all. But every now and then, I'll see somebody with their hands like they security. And I'm just saying, God bless you. God bless you. You didn't sing my song. I want to hear "Let It Rain." Now I just got to. Now you miss Jesus looking for some rain. You can't get no rain until you see Jesus. How many? How, how many people come to the house of God and miss it? Taylor Tucker tries to get us into the presence of God and praise and worship, but how many people miss it? Catching up on your tweets. Looking at your texts. I think I'd be home in about an hour and a half. Miss it. Right in the presence of God and miss it. Because somebody sitting up here right now, 
Because, you know, we had to play, so we're usually out. Somebody up here right now, now he better hurry up now. We got to get on out of here. Right in the presence of God. And miss it. It is bad people of God to be in the presence of God and miss it right there. Right where they had, all they had to do was bow down and, and worship him and thank God that he lived. They should have seen not a dying rebel, but they should have saw a dying savior. Oh, if they had just opened their eyes spiritually for a moment, you know what they would have been saying at the foot of the cross? Instead of crucifying Jesus, they would have said, save me, Jesus. I need your blood to cover me. I need your blood to set me free because I'm a wretch undone. The problem is too many people, you think you're too much and you think you don't need a savior. But I thank God that I'm able to see through the crowd. I'm able to see through the distractions. I'm able to see. Join us next week for more of Bishop Paul S. Morton at Changing a Generation with Dominion Over Eyes Wide Shut. It's a greater change. I know somebody ain't glad about that no more because you're glad about just the house and the car and the money, but I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm saved. Ain't no need of me standing up here acting like I've been so much if it wasn't for you. Be encouraged with this new message from Bishop Paul Morton. When you write to us, visit our website or call 1-888-4-CHANGE today. Bishop Paul S. Morton is on the move. Join us for one of the following. Saturday, May 13th in Newark, New Jersey for the McDonald's Gospel Festival at the Prudential Center. For more information, log on to www.365black.com. Wednesday, May 17th in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the New Home Ministries for the 9th Pastoral Pre-Anniversary Service. Bishop Samuel R. Blakes is the host. For more information, call 225-358-6780. Friday, May 19th in Macon, Georgia at the New Life International Church for the Bloomfield Unity Revival. Overseer Eric Bell is the host. For more information, call 478-227-0156. Thursday, May 25th in Richmond, Virginia at the Victory Tabernacle Church of Deliverance for the Leadership Summit. Bishop Kevin Harris is the host. For more information, call 804-222-8540. Monday, May 29th in Orlando, Florida at the Church of God in Christ, Department of Women for the 67th Women's International Convention and Gospel Explosion. Evangelist Dorinda Clark Cole is the host. For more information, call 888-673-7208. Tuesday, May 30th in Columbia, South Carolina at the Bible Way Church for the Resurrection to Pentecost celebration. Pastor Daryl Jackson is the host. For more information, call 803-776-1238. We're one church in two states. For a list of services and events, log on to www.cagman.org for Atlanta. And for New Orleans, log on to www.gssmin.org. Miracles. <laughs> Signs and wonders. Shed over God of glory, glory. Oh, show us you. We want you. We want you.
next week on Greater Change Ministries. Sunday after Sunday, week after week, all they see is the beautiful campus. All they see is the preacher standing up here preaching the word of God. Don't let Pastor D come in with nice shoes. You don't talk about them. Now that was some shoes you had on, girl. Miss. Miss Jesus. All they see is the choir singing. But it ain't just about the choir singing. It's not just about the praise team singing. It's about you seeing Jesus before you leave this place. <laughs>